Hi and welcome back. As much as I want to stress on the importance of the subject that we are going to discuss today, I just want to disclaim that we are in no way an expert on the financial matters, but what is coming from a common man's understanding is of catastrophic scale. The US dollar has not seen uh, a bigger challenge in its 200 years of existence. What is lurking on the horizon is far more uh, catastrophic than the recession of 2008 or maybe the Great Depression of 1938. Um, a lot of people would say that this is a hoax and this is a false cry, nothing of that sort is going to happen. So we are going to give you some indications on the global political and financial front to tell you that exactly and actually this is what is happening. More than 20 countries have shown interest to be part of the BRICS platform. There's essentially a platform which is working to, to, to develop a currency or a commodity in which they can trade the crude oil or you know other bilateral agreement, trade agreements other than the US dollar. If this happens, um, it means that the global hegemony the US dollar always had is going to be challenged. Now we understand the fact that the gold standard was abolished back in 1976. It was done in the Nixon's time. Um, since then, the Federal Reserve in the US has been printing dollar to, to bail out the financial institutions, the banks, and it's done it several times. Because of the fact that it has now found the ease of uh, printing the US dollar without having, a con without having to conform to a set standard. US dollar today draws its strength from the fact that the crude oil across the world is traded in US dollars. If the BRICS is able to develop this new currency or a commodity uh, to trade the crude oil or even to, to execute their other bilateral trade agreement, it means the US dollar is going to lose whatever sta standard it has against the crude oil. Now, among the 20 countries that are uh, interested in the BRICS platform includes Saudi Arabia and Iran as well. Now, China has already bought a, a peace deal between Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia, means that three of the biggest oil producers in the world, including Iran, Russia, and Saudi Arabia, are going to be part of the BRICS. And they will be trading their oil, which is their biggest produce, in a commodity which is other than the US dollar. Also, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that Saudis and the US uh, have a fixed exchange rate uh, since 1986, which means that if you go and Google the exchange rate between Saudi real and the US dollar, it would, would be just a straight line because the, 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 the exchange rate does not fluctuate. It's one US dollar is equivalent to 3.75 Saudi reals and has not changed since 1986. If Saudis become a part of the BRICS, definitely this fixed exchange rate will be abolished. And it could mean that one Saudi real is equivalent to $3.75 or even worse. And this is going to be a severe blow to the, the hegemony of the US dollar in the global financial markets. More interestingly, Germany and France have also shown interest in, uh, in the, this new commodity the BRICS platform is uh, trying to bring about. Which means that if, Russia, uh, if uh, Germany and France are interested and part of the BRICS platform, it means it's going to be a debt blow to the European Union. The fragmentation of European Union means that all the European countries will revert back to their initial original currency. Some of them might even switch over to the BRICS platform, further deepening the crisis for the US dollars. Now there are two major implications of such a scenario. The, first of all, the US is not going to sit around and just watch US dollar go down. Definitely is going to do something uh, to, to contain the situation. And what could that be? It possibly be a third world war. Now, this is a whole lot of different topic. What are the implications of Third World War? Several books have been written on it. And, um, you know, you can discuss in detail about what are the implications of such a war. Let's hope that it does not go down to that extent. Pakistan is in a downward spiral, both politically, economically, and socially since last one year. And there's absolutely no end to this downward spiral. Uh, the bureaucracy, the power echelons, the, the military establishment, the, uh, the political leadership, nobody's concerned about how to grab the situation before, before it spins out of control. So Pakistan is essentially on their own right now. So what can be done for a common man's uh, perspective to safeguard their interests if such a thing happens on the global front? And the first and foremost thing to do would be to liquidate the assets. If you have capital investment in US dollars, in Euro, in uh, pound sterling, the, the best thing would be to liquidate those assets and buy some uh, and to invest in hedges like the, the gold or the crypto or silver or whatever you think is uh, 
equivalent to that. Pakistanis love to invest in the, the real estate. You know, the, the ideal thing right now would be to liquidate all those assets. Again, invest in hedge, hedge, hedge your money, you now get some commodity or whatsoever. But the best thing we think to do right now would be the ruralization of Pakistan. Uh, people have, Pakistan is the, the most urbanized country in the world, probably in South Asia, I think. Uh, more than 70% of the population lives in the cities. Uh, people have been doing it over a period of time, uh, selling their, of their assets, moving to the cities. I understand it's not easy for people in Pakistan to go back living in the, the, uh, the uh, rural uh, settings. Uh, people are not, families are not accustomed to that. Uh, they're not good schools, uh, healthcare. Uh, people are doing business or uh, doing jobs in the cities. Obviously, it's not going to be easy. For such a person who cannot actually abandon the, their urban lifestyle and go back to the, the villages, what the best thing would be to, uh, to get a farmland or get an agricultural land or get a piece of land or plantation, get your own food sustainability in place, uh, grow some vegetables, get some poultry, get some daily, dairy. Um, you know, get a solar backup power supply so that you cannot be blackmailed by the ever rising power costs. Uh, get some CCTV cameras, get a couple of Rottweilers, you know, protect your farmland, the piece of land that is going to ensure your food sustainability. And then you can, what you can do is to wait if, and see how the, the things unfold and the crisis is actually going to set in and how things will change in Pakistan. For Pakistan, uh, from the government's perspective, I think the ideal situation would be um, that Pakistan needs to mend its uh, fences with India. You know, the biggest loss we have uh, seen in 75 years of history is the loss of the 1971, the, the loss of East Pakistan. And if you're, not, if you're not able to mend your fences with India, obviously India will be the calling the shots in the long run. A big me member of the BRICS platform is is an active member of uh, Shanghai Corporation Organization as well. Um, so it's very important that the best way to do it is to get a mediator in, in this regard. Now the US is not going to do that. Uh, the best ideal situation, ideal country to do that would be China because China has done uh, something out of this, out of mind. Uh, what, what they were able to achieve with Iran and Saudi Arabia, this was unprecedented. So China can definitely do that. Uh, and it is obviously it goes uh, in favor of the Chinese and the, the, the BRICS uh, platform as well. So this is all what is coming. Uh, uh, again, we are again, we want to emphasize the fact that we are apolitical in regards to our uh, content that we produce. But definitely if such a thing of such a catastrophic scale is coming and we can see it's coming, definitely it's very important to uh, bring about uh, in our vlogs. Hope you enjoy it. Keep watching and till we catch you later.